Back in February, we took a chilly trip up north and stumbled into Freight House. It's a restaurant owned and operated by Top Chef alum, Sarah Bradley. So while we were back in the area this July, we decided to stop in and talk to Chef Sarah about how COVID has affected her, Freight House, and businesses like it. Here's what she had to say. So I think it's really interesting how COVID has affected a lot of the small businesses. Um, you know, we rely on people trusting us to cook a good meal for them. They leave their house, they bring their family, they meet their friends. And I think that right now it's just, um, it's interesting, you know, we're, there's, there's, we're rebuilding trust with people, not that we've done anything to, you know, to make them not trust us, but, um, you know, we need to let them know that we're doing everything possible to keep them protected, but we're also doing everything possible to keep ourselves protected. Um, you know, I think that a lot of restaurants had to pivot, had to do different, different setups. You know, we had to close for six weeks, but we also did a lot of time just doing to-go food, doing these really kind of extravagant family meals, um, stuff like that. But we pivoted and it worked, but everybody that works in this industry does it because they like serving people, you know. And this is not an industry of introverts. This is an industry of extroverts. You have to be willing to go up to a table of complete strangers and chat. And, um, you know, so I think that when we shut down, it was even harder for everybody because that is how everyone lives their life. You know, and we haven't had people be upset with us. We've required a mask since we reopened. So we required a mask the whole time even before the you know the mandates and um you know it's just we decided we were going to be overly cautious and it's been good because we haven't had any run-ins yet mm -hmm. so i think you know my advice for other small businesses that are struggling right now is just to figure out number one who your kind of base demographic and clientele are you know, we knew that if we were doing these family meals um, and we were doing you know, special nights of food, they were one time only, that a lot of our customers would really want to do that because it was a one time only. It was a freight house special and we don't offer specials here. We change the menu all the time. You guys are going to, get to taste some of the new stuff on the menu tonight, but um, that's kind of how we do. So we knew that that would attract customers. So I think you have to look at who is your base clientele, who is there to support you in this time, and want you to be there so they can support you later on. And then I think, don't be afraid to try something new. You know, we have never done to go, we've been open five years, and we've never done to go food, and we decided we were gonna do it now. And I remember saying, like telling people like, I will never do to go food, I'll never do it. And then we spent weeks just doing to go, and we have a lot of people that come in and they order to go and we do contact delivery to, you know, contactless delivery to the car. Um, there was a small time where we were actually delivering to people's homes when there was a stay at home order. So we tried everything and we've been able to weather the storm. So when we first opened back up, we were having some problems with getting meat. Meat was a big problem and it was because a lot of the meat processing plants were having um, you know, exposure to COVID and so they were having to shut down. Um, now it's not been as bad. What's interesting to see is the farms themselves. So there was this stay at home order where people weren't doing a ton of farming. They weren't going out into the fields as much. They weren't sure, they were uncertain about what the future was gonna hold. And so they maybe didn't plant as much. So we're seeing from our local farmers a little less supply than normal, which makes sense. You know, why plant 20 acres if you're only gonna sell five? You know, so maybe they just planted 10 and now we've amped back up and they, you know, are a little behind. Um, but we're doing everything we can. I mean, we buy as much local as we can. My mom and I were just at farm stands today. We went and we picked up cucumbers and we went someplace else and got peppers so we went someplace else and got tomatoes but we're picky so we go to like the best pepper place the best cucumber place the best tomato place um, but we also do that to kind of spread the love instead of buying everything from one person we know where our money goes and it's nice to see that um, the supply chain is catching back up but um, I think everyone just needs to be overly cautious so that we stay in that catch-up game instead of falling behind. 
I think that if you want to help small businesses in your area or you want to help the freight house, um, you know, surprisingly, gift certificates are a great way to do that. It gives the businesses and restaurants an influx of money that, um, you know, it's a, it's a tax, it's a tax free thing. So the money comes in right now. We're not paying taxes on it because we don't pay taxes on it until someone uses it. So when you come back and use that money in three or four months, six months, a year, you know, that's when the taxes get paid on it and we've had some time to recoup. So gift certificates are an amazing way to support businesses right now. And then to go food and coming in and sitting at the dinner table. And I think that it's really important to find out what each business is doing and then kind of just follow their rules. You know, we require a mask um, and you know, it's easier just to find that out ahead of time and then come in and support us and, you know, drink our cocktails and taste our food and wear your mask and all that good stuff. But I think, um, I think gift certificates, if people just realized how wonderful that is to a restaurant right now, we can get your money now and you can spend it later. It's almost like a small business, like everyone is giving every restaurant they buy a gift certificate, this tiny little business loan. Keep the money now and we'll come and we'll spend it later. It's a great investment. After we talked with Chef Sarah, it was time to eat. We started with the homemade pork rinds with blueberry maple sauce and tarragon aioli. So perfectly crunchy and salty, but without that mouth coating fatty flavor pork rinds usually have. Then we had the baby back ribs with a cantaloupe salad, fish sauce caramel, and peanuts. And our last appetizer is the one we came in specifically to try after Chef Sarah shared it on social media. It's Ellen's pepperoni dip topped with pecans and served with house-made tortilla chips. Since Freight House's menu was always changing, we knew we had to get our behinds up here to try this dip and holy pepperoni, it was worth it. Mm. After indulging in these amazing appetizers, we grabbed a fruity summer drink from the bar. It had the fresh flavors of blackberry and basil and tasted like the ice cold summer juice we're all looking for. For my main dish, I took a chance on the griddle burger. It has melty American cheese, peach barbecue sauce, house-made mustard, served with garlic fries. This was, hands down, no question, the best burger I have ever eaten. I want one right now, but unfortunately, I'm nine hours away. Johnny B stepped out of her comfort zone and got the hot damn hot brown, which is a Kentucky classic. Freight House has their own spin with the sweet tea brine chicken topped with some pork belly. It was delicious, and we saw quite a few people hopping on that hot brown train. As if we didn't get enough food, Chef Sarah sent out the blackened Kentucky Silver Carp with heirloom carrots, fermented honey, and blackberries. An amazing option on their menu. Even though we were stuffed to the brim, we had to have the amazing, delicious chocolate mocha cake with fudge icing and spiked raspberry sauce. This stuff was heavenly. Chef Sarah has this way of creating dishes with flavors we would normally never go for. But we've learned her and the kitchen staff at Freight House can create magic because everything is always amazing. So come on down to Freight House and try something new and different. Expand your palate and pick up a gift card for you or a friend from Freight House or your favorite local restaurant. Help keep our amazing hometown businesses and restaurants alive. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. It doesn't cost you nothing to hit that button, y'all.